Welcome to Hamburgers and Horror, the home of meat, monsters, and men getting lost in the woods. I'm Noah Hook, and today we're looking at 2017's The Ritual. The Ritual follows four friends who take a remote hiking trip in Sweden, eventually getting lost and hunted by something in the woods. It's a monster movie, but it's also largely a psychological horror, focusing on the tension and grief within the group. The story is based on a novel written by Adam Neville. The premise is pretty much the same, with writer Joe Barton making a few changes to adapt it to film. It was directed by David Bruckner, who is relatively new to the scene, only having a few other feature films under his belt with The Signal and The Night House. He is the one currently set to direct the newest installment in the Hellraiser series, and I'm a fan of the ritual so I'm actually pretty hopeful for it. The film premiered in Toronto and was quickly scooped up by Netflix, where it was widely released in 2018. The film is pretty much well regarded, with a solid 73 and 60 on Rotten Tomatoes. I think most would agree it's a well shot, well acted, well made movie. What some hold against it is the movie's simplicity, it's a pretty straightforward, familiar story but it also has a ton that I haven't seen before. With that, let's get out our Nordic runes and begin the ritual. We open on Luke, played by Rafe Spall from Prometheus, as he rejoins his friends in a London pub. The group consists of Hutch, played by Robert James Collier from Downton Abbey, Dom, played by Sam Troughton from Alien vs Predator, Phil, played by Arshur Ali from Doctor Who, and Rob, played by Paul Reed from Never Grow Old. They are old friends from college and annually get together on a lads trip and they're trying to decide where their next should be. They debate between locations when Rob suggests hiking the King's Trail in Sweden. The night continues and most of the group is on board with hiking except Luke, who would prefer a trip with more partying. He also wants to keep tonight going as well and goes in to buy some more liquor, which none of the other guys have any interest in. Rob reluctantly joins him inside. In the store, Luke complains about his friends getting boring with age and that he doesn't want to go hiking as he picks up a bottle of vodka. That's when he notices the cashier on the ground and beaten, as the store is in the middle of a robbery. Luke is able to sneak behind a shelf, leaving Rob to the robbers. They demand his wallet and watch, which he hands over. Luke considers using the bottle as a weapon to help Rob, as he refuses to give the robbers his wedding ring. The more irate of the two threatens to kill Rob, who looks back at Luke. He loses patience and bashes Rob in the head, knocking him to the floor. He might be okay though. Oh no, not anymore. The robbers flee as Rob bleeds out. We jump to six months later as Luke wakes from his tent in Sweden. We see Hutch, Phil, and Dom are there as well. We get some beautiful shots of the Swedish landscape, which is actually the beautiful Romanian landscape where the film was shot, as the men find a spot for their memorial to Rob. Dom states it should never have happened, slightly throwing shade to Luke, which everyone picks up on. They take a sip from Rob's flask and pour the rest out for him, which takes a comically long time. Later that night, Hutch tells Luke that Rob's death isn't his fault, even if he or others don't believe that. Hutch notices the lodge in the distance, giving them an idea of how far they are. The next morning sucks, as the guys pack up in the rain, and not long after Dom takes a spill. He makes a bit of a scene, limping around and yelling. He says he can't do another 14 hours of hiking on his injured knee. Hutch and Luke agree Dom's injury probably isn't as bad as he's making it seem. But Hutch does have an idea for a shortcut through the forest. Luke is hesitant but agrees when Hutch says they could be at the lodge by nightfall. On their way into the forest, they notice an old abandoned van, bad sign number one. They also notice the forest is unusually quiet, bad sign number two. They do have time to take a little photo op though. The four guys do have great chemistry and a lot of funny banter. And while I can't cover every Joker story, just know their friendships seem very genuine despite the tension growing between them. There are also a lot of cool shots of them traversing this forest, which I also can't show all of, but the simplicity of the setting and the cast really helps to immerse the viewer in their shoes. The guys are talking about their favorite foods when they suddenly find an elk gutted and impaled on the tree branches. They argue about whether a hunter, a bear, or something else did this, but they keep going as they probably don't want to find out. Night falls and a thunderstorm begins. Luke notices some symbols carved in a tree, and nearby is a happy little cabin. They break in and find the happy little cabin has been empty for a while, and Luke hears some not so happy noises from the woods. They find more of those ancient runes, and Phil is chosen to investigate the upstairs while the others start a fire. Meanwhile, Luke is still staring outside. Everything seems pretty normal upstairs. What the fuck is that? 
Phil calls them up to share his creepy crafty discovery. It more or less looks like a headless person with antler hands and mummified child hands? Chicken feet? Your guess is as good as mine. Hutch wonders if it is some sort of pagan or Nordic offering, while Phil just calls it good old witchcraft. They consider going back out the way they came, but Hutch is confident they can make it out. The boys go to sleep and we hear some more strange noises outside. Luke wakes to a bright light and follows it outside, but it brings him back to the liquor store Rob died at. He picks up the same bottle of vodka when he feels a sharp pain in his chest. He wakes up outside the cabin as something runs back into the woods and his chest is bleeding in a hand-like shape. He runs back in and wakes a screaming, pea-covered Hutch and Dom who is in the corner calling for his wife, Gail. He realizes Phil is missing and heads upstairs where he finds Phil naked and praying to the effigy. One look outside and they realize they fucked up as all the trees surrounding the cabin have those symbols carved into them. Bad sign like 100 by now. Dom notices a trail and demands they take it, despite it not being in the right direction to the lodge. Phil and Luke want to talk about what happened in the cabin, but Hutch and Dom would rather not. After some more walking, Hutch tells Luke he is about to pull rank despite there being some signs of civilization on the trail. They come across another cabin, but wisely decide not to check it out. Dom needs to take a break and Phil's feet are also hurting. Hutch and Luke are getting frustrated with the slow pace and Luke heads up to the ridge to see what's beyond it. He makes it to the top which only has a lot more forest, although it's a bit different looking than the forest we've seen so far. Luke hears some branches snap and looks around, noticing a creepy little hand that belongs to something creepy and big. He books it back to the group and tries to tell them what he saw. Basically, none of them believe him even when he shows him his weird cuts. Dom and Luke start arguing, which finally leads to the tension boiling over and Dom blaming Luke for Rob's death and calling him a coward. Luke punches him in the face and walks off. Hutch catches up with him and Luke asks him if he thinks he should have stood up in the liquor store. Hutch doesn't have an answer and the group keeps on moving. They notice something under some moss, which turns out to be a tent, some shoes, a wallet, and other old supplies. The woman's credit card expired in 1984, once again a very bad sign. Hutch once again has to keep spirits up, reminding them they registered with the lodge and soon people will come looking for them. But night falls and the group is looking really shitty, despite Hutch's best efforts. Dom's knee is looking really bad and Phil is pretty exhausted. Hutch thinks Luke should try to head out in the morning and find help by himself while he stays with Dom and Phil. Everyone is asleep aside from Luke, who hears more branches in the distance. He hears the creature and slowly comes out of his tent but he is again met with the memory of Rob's death, this time being stared down by the robber who speaks some ancient language. He ducks back inside when he notices the creature and Hutch's tent gets pulled away. But it looks like this was another dream. Phil is outside screaming and Hutch's tent is ripped open with no sign of Hutch. Phil isn't sure what he saw and they wake up Dom. They hear Hutch and the creature screaming in the distance and run after them. Dom convinces Luke to turn around so they can find the camp and gather their supplies. Morning comes and they weren't able to find their tents and now they are missing their strongest member. Oh wait, I think they found him. Damn, RIP Hutch. They get him down and at least get the compass and a knife off his body. Phil knows they were meant to find his body and Dom refuses to believe anything supernatural is happening. They cover Hutch in some sticks and press on. They are back in those trees with the yellow grass and Luke realizes it. Luke and Phil talk about the creature but Dom thinks it's just some people that are doing all this. Dom starts yelling and Luke takes control, telling them they are going to be quiet and walk in the direction Hutch said until they are out of this forest. The boys find a much needed stream and realize it has been traveled on recently. They decide not to follow the footsteps and keep southwest. As they climb a hill we get a peek at the sneaky creature watching them. They make it up but Dom and Phil are exhausted. Luke goes by himself to another ridge and this one actually shows Luke the end of the forest, Hutch's directions being correct but Luke does notice a bunch of small fires between them and their exit. He finds Phil, who says they heard something, and he immediately gets snatched away. Luke runs right into a tree, and as he hides, he sees a dying Rob. He runs out of the store to his friends, which transitions back to reality. Luke hides from the monster and eventually finds Dom hiding as well. Dom finally acknowledges there is something inhuman in these woods, and their only shot is to make a run for it to the end of the forest that Luke saw. They count to three and start busting ass, but immediately get turned around by the creature. 
They reach a path with a bunch of small fires and find Phil strung up in a tree. The monster is hot on their trail and they follow the path to a spooky ass cabin. They collapse inside and Luke hears an old Swedish record playing and sees this cutie pie. I'm sure she'll be a wonderful host. Boot to the face. Luke wakes to find himself and Dom tied to the wall and some scary fucking chanting happening upstairs. They spy on their captors and see they are building something. Luke tries to reach a glass and cut the ropes, but gets bamboozled by some visitors. It's two hills have eyes looking fellas and the tiny woman we met earlier. She hobbles over and gives Luke some water. She looks at his scar and shows off her own, which looks oddly swastika shaped, but I think that's just happenstance. Dom doesn't have the mark, so he gets zero water and gets taken away by the scary men. Luke listens as Dom screams and those scary voices chant. A younger woman enters and tells Luke they are preparing for a sacrifice and it will be over soon. After a while they bring Dom back in and boy does he look shitty. Dom tells Luke about his nightmare in the first cabin. He saw these people offering him to the monster and he saw his wife which is why he was screaming her name. He says he is going to die here but Luke needs to escape and burn this place to the ground when he does. Luke refuses to accept Dom's surrender but is definitely coming to terms with it possibly being true. The group brings Dom out and binds him to the sacrificial pole. Dom looks around and sees a lot of bodies in the trees. Now it's time to wait for the monster. Apparently the monster has had a busy day as we cut to nightfall. Dom has grown impatient and starts yelling for the beast to come out. The monster howls and the group drops to the ground. Meanwhile Luke has broken his thumb to get out of his restraints. But it isn't a monster that comes out of the woods, it's Dom's wife Gail who holds his face. Psych. Whatever the fuck we just saw carries Dom and impales him into the trees. The woman comes to see Luke who hides that he is free from his restraints. He asks if they'll take Dom down but she says they don't move the bodies. He asks what the creature is, she says it is a god, one of the ancient Yutan, a bastard offspring of Loki. They do not say its name. The creature keeps them in these woods and keeps them alive beyond natural years in exchange for their worship. She says it takes all of their pain away. Luke's ritual will begin tonight, he will either kneel to the god or hang from the trees like Dom. On her way out Luke notices she has the same scar, he asks why him, and she says because his pain is great. Luke leaves his room and sneaks past the old woman upstairs to where the scary chanting is happening. He grabs a torch and heads in and the chanting immediately stops. This can't be right, it's just a bunch of old dead bodies right? Wrong. These are the ones who have been kept alive by the Yutin longest. While they are alive, their bodies are pretty much shot, so all they can do is chant I guess. Luke calmly sets them on fire and leaves. The old woman has found him and Luke just fucking decks her in the face. The group notices the fire, as does the Yutin. Luke finds a gun and loads it up. The creature speaks an ancient language and grabs the young woman. One of the followers finds Luke and tries to talk to him even after he tries to shoot him and the gun jams. Second time's the charm though. Another follower drops his axe, but he didn't do it for you Luke, he did it for the giant hooved monster outside. Aw oh, shit, he killed the kind of nice lady. The creature crouches down and looks at Luke. He books it through a burned up wall and runs into the woods. We finally get a full shot of the beast and boy is it a badass shot. So it has four legs with hooves like a deer, but its head is shaped like a headless human torso with antlers for arms but it has human-like arms where the legs should be, and two more human arms between the hooved legs, and its actual face is submerged in the pelvic area of the human form. Not sure if my wording makes any sense, but y'all have the picture to look at. It's a cool ass monster. Luke shoots the creature, which does nothing but get its attention, and he runs. It comes chasing after him and creates more hallucinations of the liquor store. It knocks him down, but Luke can see the end of the forest. But he isn't quick enough and the creature grabs him. It picks him up to kill him, but he wisely pulls himself down to kneel to the monster. The Yutin gets into a ritualistic pose, absorbing power or something like that, who really knows. Luke tries to stand, but it pushes him to the ground where he sees Rob and an axe. He stands again and chops the creature, which has a bit more effect than the bullet. Luke runs and actually makes it out of the forest. The creature stops at the edge, presumably unable to leave the woods. Luke and the creature trade some screams and the movie ends with Luke heading toward the paved road in the distance. And that's the ritual. 
The first time I finished it, I was pumped. It's such a unique monster, but what the hell is it? I hopped on the old Google to try to figure it out, as I'm sure many people did, but the answer is a bit more intricate than I originally thought. As I said, the movie is based on Adam Neville's book by the same name. In the book, the creature is specifically named Motor, which is a fictional name and not one of Loki's children, which are Fenrir, Jormungandr, Narfi, Vali, and Sleipner. But the creature actually has a lot in common with Sleipner, which is the child created between Loki and his own horse, Svafari. Long story short, Loki fucked a horse and it birthed an eight-legged horse, which was named Sleipner and given to Odin to ride. The anatomy of the creature would make it possible to ride, but it is more reminiscent of an elk than a horse. The creature does technically have eight legs, four large and hooved and four smaller and human-like. The creature also utilizes the ability to cause hallucinations and possibly shapeshift, abilities that the god of mischief would seemingly pass down. When Luke and Dom burst into the cabin and we saw the old woman, you probably didn't think much of the stone she was praying in front of. That stone is actually a pretty accurate recreation of the Kirkby Stevens stone, which is a real stone tablet thought to depict Loki. Even the way the creature kills is related to Odin, who once impaled himself to gain magic and wisdom. But the creature is referred specifically to as a Jutan, which are a bit more open to interpretation in their Norse history. They have ranged from giants to trolls to other grotesque monsters, and while they are known to have supernatural abilities, they usually aren't directly affiliated with the gods. There are a few other options from the vast mythology, but the easiest answer is to just accept what's given in the movie as the creature's ambiguity and mystery are part of what makes it so cool in the first place. I'm also not a Norse mythology buff, so I can only talk out of my ass for so long. Although I will refer to the creature as Motor for the rest of this review just for simplicity's sake. Motor is one of the coolest monsters we've gotten on screen in a long time. It's very rare for me to find a post-2010 monster that I can honestly call original. The strange anatomy of its human body shaped head is so unsettling. Great work by Keith Thompson who designed the crazy beast and Russell EFX who helped bring it and the decaying worshippers to life. Combine Motor's visuals with its supernatural abilities and you have a very formidable monster indeed. It is my understanding that those times when the guys were in the area of woods that was better lit and had the yellow grass that they were actually in a hallucination and didn't realize it. I assume it was a trick by the creature to keep the guys lost and to lead them towards the followers. I haven't seen many people talk about that but it makes sense to me as it happened when Luke was looking over a ridge that should have pointed towards the lodge and the second time Luke acknowledges it as the same terrain and is just so distinctly different looking. It's also interesting that Motor wants followers that specifically have had a lot of grief and pain in their life, which is why it chose Luke. The combination of his own dreams and Motor's visions really helps paint the picture of how much grief, shame, and regret he feels over Rob's death. All four of the guys play such realistic characters, I feel for all of them throughout the film. The movie has a great flow between tension, fear, and little bits of comedy throughout the whole thing. Like when Luke finds these horrifying living corpses and he just easily burns them all to death and then decks an old woman, it's hilarious. I don't really have any big complaints for the ritual, it's a pretty simple, by the numbers horror movie, but it makes such good use of its setting and cast that I don't really mind its simplicity. They keep their amazing monster on the outskirts of the movie for most of the run, which I do think was a smart decision. One idea I wouldn't mind is if there were more of Motor's followers that were in between the two stages that we saw, the living ones and the rotten ones upstairs, like if there was a few kind of rotten guys that could still walk around and stuff. But that really isn't necessary and it would definitely up the cheese factor of the movie. The actors all do a great job. Watching them unravel is entertaining, frustrating, and depressing. The sound design and music is both top notch and I think the overall pacing is really good as well. Overall, The Ritual is a solid horror movie that offers something for just about everyone. It's got cult stuff, it's got monster stuff, it's got scary wood stuff, it's got supernatural stuff. What's not to like? Well, that's about it. Thanks so much for watching. As always, I'm Noah Hook, and this has been Hamburgers and Horror. Stay safe out there. Thanks for watching my review of The Ritual. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe so you can keep up with all my other horror reviews. And if you want to support the channel further, go check me out on Instagram or Patreon. Thanks, y'all.